Okay, so 54.98. So 55 is what I paid for this. <clears throat> and I got it at, I don't know, we call them box stores, but it's like stores that buys Amazon returns and uh, I don't know what all, to be honest with you. Uh, I would assume Amazon returns and liquidations from places and whatnot. That stuff is good. And now, this doesn't work exactly right. It heats up. All that stuff's good. But the vacuum doesn't come on. But we're going to start taking a look at it and see what's what. Just a, a quick little little gander. See if I can pull this apart and potentially figure out a quick fix, maybe. And I'm going to take you, you with me to see what we can see. So it's got, I think, three other tips that come with it. And I didn't know this, but apparently these tips are kind of loaded with some solder, so they're plugged off. That's not the, the cause of the uh, uh, not uh, not sucking. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, because I did uh, disconnect the hose and put my finger over the deal with this plugged in. This heated up just fine, but it didn't. I didn't hear the pump come on. So we are i like to keep my t8 always installed so let me set it there I would uh I wouldn't think that it would be a big thing to find another motor that would work if the motor was bad. But usually motor it's like, you know, windshield wipers. How many times have you replaced the windshield wiper motor in your car? I don't know that I've ever replaced one in a vehicle. Though maybe you have. You might have. I don't know. So you've got Of course, that's the vacuum set up. You have all of these wires going in there. So you have the thermocouple going in there. You have the heating element going in there. Um... a couple heating element and I don't know what all I there we go okay so let me grab my little meter here Now that would just be too easy. Oh, no, apparently not. Okay, so it's not the switch. That is breaking. It's just breaking the 24 volts. So the 24 volts is being sent out from the base. So I really need to figure out. Let's do this. 
So I know we've got this white wire coming out of the main set of wires and we're breaking it. So it is looping. So two of these is going to be this switch, which is simply breaking the 24 volt. Okay, so let's find out what number that is. So we've got the yellow, which is touching here. It's on the outside. That is a ridiculous way to ground. So I'm assuming that it's going to be ground or shield. And so looks like center pin and five. So five and six are the switch. So I should have voltage, 24 volts on five and six. Okay, so I'm not getting 24 volts. And that is the actual problem. So let's see about opening uh, this puppy up. There we go. That's odd. Okay, so we do have something unplugged. And it is now plugged back in. You know, we'll pull, put that back in after we test this. Be, you, you usually want to make sure you get your strain relief hooked back up because it could very easily end up um, pulling wires loose. So. listen to there all right crisis averted so it's a now a working so let me show you exactly what the case was <clears throat> and chances are uh i mean i'm gonna have to assume that this machine came from overseas and just being jostled around although it was glued now i'm gonna have to try to zoom in on this but if you look right here this black one see can you see it yes okay so you can see this little very not very good glue job but this black one had come loose and of course that was supplying the 24 volts to go down to the uh the the handle and to return back over here to yeah it comes straight on so this this is just a 24 volt uh motor and so the power supply gives off the voltage needed to heat the iron but then it's also got a 24 volt leg on it or a power 24 volt power rail on it that comes out very simply goes into this section right here or wherever it's tied in i'm not sure i have to really dig in there to see but it, it's tied in somewhere this is the switch to turn it on and off uh so it would be going into the board and uh powering the board is probably 24 volt uh set up on the board itself at least i mean that's what i would do if if that was me and then you've got this hooked to the board to give you your 24 volt which comes down here to the um um i forget what these connectors are called i'm sorry i have put so many on cb radios but still uh comes down to this connector goes out to the uh hand unit here 
and just loops through the switch and returns back here to this part, which is simply breaking the white wire right here that's carrying the 24 volts from this board down to the handle, broken by the switch, comes back out from this same area, comes up here to the motor, and in here goes down to the ground system on the, the board, probably back over to this ground right here. Now, we have this little three-prong Molex connector. It has two here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I have to trace it back. I'm pretty sure it's it's I'm pretty sure it's right here. Uh, and not just because of the color of the wires, but I'm pretty sure that it's it's going to right in here. And I don't know what that is, but I would assume that is for some added feature potentially. Now, one thing that we do have here is there are rubber feet right here that would go under these, this uh, nut, and that helps this in vibration. And so I'm going to hook all that back up before I put all this back together. So that's got to be put back together. Being as that was pulled a loose, I would say that chances are very likely, and that feels like silicone tubing, I would say chances are very, very likely that this whole unit, because it's not damaged and the box is not really damaged, so I would say this whole unit was just impacted. It just failed. The whole box failed. And whatever the packing was in place did its job and protected it. Or possibly the original box was destroyed. But it did its job and, and protected it. But it knocked this piece right here loose. In which this right here came a loose and pulled back. And so I don't think it really knocked this piece of loose. I think when this right here came loose or potentially was never properly... Let's see... When this whole vacuum system right here either came loose or was never properly uh, connected to the anchor there, flip back like this right here, the force jerked that plug out, supplying the 24 volts to the motor. Turn yes. the power on. And it is preset to 334 Fahrenheit. Uh heat on i really don't know fahrenheit on an iron 168 celsius is not going to melt solder so we're moving it up 200 we got it up to 320 celsius let's let it get up there and see what happens It's at 150, 960, 70, 80, 190, 200. And counting. Heat on and it's lit up saying wait. So I'm going to let it keep going before triggering it. I'll wait till that goes off. 250. And this is the Anesty, A-N-E-S-T-Y, ZD-915. Good, bad, ugly, I don't know. So uh, heat on 320 with a preset of 320, and the heat just went off. <clears throat> and so that just sucked that solder right down in there. And it kind of splashed up against the back. So it is working. Uh, let's take a look at this little ribbon. See how easy it may or may not be to get loose. Let's see.
And keep in mind, this is the first time I have ever used one of these soldering guns. I've always wanted one. They've always been too expensive until I found this place and this was there. Now, th I, I have no idea if this is a good one. It doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is, is it was broke. We fixed it and I think I got it for a good deal. You tell me if not. So, I don't know if you can tell, but every one of those are intact. So, literally, I mean, these solder pads, I can't tell you how small they are, basically, but, I mean, my goodness. Uh... I can find something in reference. I mean, this is a twist tie. And you can see just a standard bread wrapper type twist ties covering one pad. So if that gives you an idea as how small. So this right here with that little small section is littered. I am very happy with this. I am very happy with this. It's working quite well. Uh, and all it was was a connection came loose. Very, very good. I, I am pleased. I'm tickled. I'm tickled pink. So uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm going to edit this down so it's not so long. But that's all I got for now. I uh, appreciate you uh, sticking around. And uh, again, if I haven't said it already, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. If you don't, do it anyway, because you're going to see some stuff you like on this channel. So uh, I would... Uh, just tell you, I appreciate you being here. I enjoy spending time with you and I can't wait till next time. I will see you next time. Your time is very important to me and I thank you for spending it here with me. Thanks and God bless.